Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Park Avenue Christian Church, those visiting with us online and here. If you just want to take a second to turn to your neighbor and greet them. I have a few announcements today. Uh, don't forget we have a congregational meeting right after this worship service to approve a um, slate of elders and diaconate and approve uh, bylaws, some changes in the bylaws. Um, also, today's the last day to sign up for the potluck next week for our Thanksgiving dinner and congregation or, um, consecration Sunday dinner um, that will be next week after church. So the last day to sign up and the sign-up sheet is in the narthex. Um, Park Avenue Elementary, if you have monetary donations to help families um, at Thanksgiving, uh, please give those to Linda, Lois, Sandy, and whoever else is in the bulletin. And also... Um, Park Avenue Elementary is going to have a winter store for some students to shop for their families for the holidays. So if you have any gently used stuffed animals, toys, or games, um, there's a wagon in the narthex or will be in the narthex. You can, a um, couple of them, and the next, two the next two Sundays, yep, because they need that by December 2nd. So if you have any donations for them, that would be great. Also, Linda is looking for someone to help do some uh, sewing of some strings to, so that uh, the kids can wear these. And so if there's anybody willing to help her out with some sewing skills, please see uh, Linda after church. And um, there are poinsettia order forms for Christmas cactuses and poinsettias out on the table in the narthex. And these are due by a week from Wednesday. So you'll want to do that this Sunday or next Sunday if you would like a Christmas poinsettia or Christmas cactus. Okay, um, now I would like you to um, turn to God and focus on him during our morning prelude.
Thanks, Linda. For our call to worship this morning, I am reading from Psalm 117. Did you know it's the shortest chapter and it's the middle chapter in the Bible? But oh, it's so, such a powerful hymn. It says, Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people of the earth. For his unfailing love for us is powerful. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord. Please pray with me. Oh Lord, all of us here, all your people here, praise you. We thank you for this magnificent day, and we thank you for your wonderful world, words of life, the words of the Bible that, that speak to us every day. We ask that you would be with us, be with Pastor Doug as he preaches your message to us this morning. And fill this place with your Holy Spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We'll uh, ask that we uh, now listen to um, Linda Mack as she shares a presentation with us. And uh, I believe we have Tammy who will pass out some sheets for us as well for our stewardship. Good morning. Consecration Sunday is really close at hand. Seems like we've just been waiting for it for, for a long time. It's next Sunday, and the dinner will follow, and we hope you all can come. Um, if you haven't sent in a reservation, you're still welcome to come. I'm looking forward to a most meaningful hour of worship and a time of celebration at the meal following. When we come to Christian stewardship of our treasures, two words stand out, regularity and proportionate. Giving our commitment is expressed with the faithfulness of God and in proportion to the resources we have in life. When we think about regular giving and proportionate giving, think about what would be right for you. If we cannot reach one of these goals that I'm going to be telling you about, we can begin giving regularly and proportionately and set a goal of increasing giving by 1% of the annual income each year. God is always there for us, guiding us. Let us make him our priority and give back to his kingdom. Does everybody have their... Okay, um, this, you can look at your um, papers that they gave you and look at the first week income on the chart. 
see their weekly income and figure out what yours is and then go to the left of your weekly income no not the left go to the right <laughs> you can't go to the left okay then go to the right of your weekly income and it'll show you what percentage that um, you're giving take one step to increase your percentage you know many times I have wondered how I can give more and how I should um, figure that and this really helps me with that so you can just figure it out with that that makes it really simple for you and that's it hmm? so there, there is another uh, side of the sheet and uh, I would ask you to flip it over and if you ever wondered how um, the, the church is funded, what our stewardship actually does. This tells you in fairly graphic form. So if you look at, and I, I invite you to take a pen or, or a pencil or whatever, and uh, if you see the first step uh, uh, between a cent and four ninety nine per week, if you would write down the number six there. So if we could all do that. Write down the number six. The next step, those who give $5 to $9.99, put seven. The next step up uh, from uh, 10 to $14.99 is four. The next step up, uh, 15 to $19.99 is four. The next step up, which is another $5 a week, is eight. The next step up is three. The next step up is one. The next step up is seven. The next step up is three. The next step up is four. And the next step up is five. Now, what do these numbers mean? These are the number of giving units, of people or giving units who actually give. So in other words, uh, we have down that uh, one family in the, the six families in the church give for, for anywhere between uh, one cent and five dollars. Seven families give uh, the next step up between five and ten dollars. In addition to increasing per percent, you might want to consider, not in addition to or, or it's an or, you might want to consider giving five more dollars a week. This will all be accomplished next week as we will have an opportunity to uh, make our estimate of giving. You'll have cards that will be given to you and we'll all have a moment next week where we'll come up, put our cards in a bowl uh, in a moment of worship and a moment of prayer and we will prayerfully make an estimate of giving for the coming year. The totals of all of those estimates will be announced at the fellowship dinner, uh, which we will have next week. So we look forward to that. Uh, we have a lot going on during this time in which we prepare for our prayer. Our next thing is, I think we have a presentation by a bunch of reindeer. Get t-shirts ordered 
for Park Avenue Christian Church. And the sign-up sheet for that is out in the narthex. There are wonderful t-shirts. They're um, very soft. They are stretchy. And the um, writing on them, they won't peel off. Woohoo! Let's thank our reindeer. Good job, Carolyn. May I have that? That's all right. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Um, another uh, opportunity for us to uh, see God is through our giving uh, uh, in Holy Buckets, which uh, goes to our DMARC food pantry um, efforts. And so I'll ask the children to grab some buckets and uh, come around and if you ha if you would like to give to that you are very welcome uh, to do so uh, now as they're doing that I want to offer one additional way for you to give that is through a, um, a we have six offerings per year for mission one goes to higher education around Thanksgiving time there is a letter in your bulletin and an envelope if you would like to give to our higher education ministries you are welcome to do that uh, uh, through putting money in the envelope and when it comes for time for offering then to put that envelope uh, in the uh, offering plate as it is passed so thank you thank you thank you thank you for giving uh, we very much appreciate that and as we've had a lot of ways that we've seen God during this announcement time, additional announcement time, let me just ask for one or two God sightings. How have you seen God uh, this week? Yep, two. So last weekend, Kirk and I were able to um, fly out to the East Coast to where my family is um, and met up for my one and only nephew, wedding on Sunday, and it was a beautiful day out in the country in Southern Virginia. Yay, praise God for that. One more, maybe? Uh, Leo, you always have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to Grandpa. I think Leo is thanking God for his grandparents. There we go. That's good. Yep, he nods at that. And with that, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, with that, I'll ask us now to go to God in prayer as we focus on God in Jesus the Christ. We breathe deeply of God's very good spirit. We now pray together as we first listen for God's voice, as we have seen how God is active in the life of this congregation, and as we know the blessing and love of God, how much God loves us. Let's settle ourselves in this love and receive it in a spirit of thanksgiving as we pray together. God, on this day, we thank you for uh, just so many gifts you have given to us and an opportunity for us to practice compassion, to give to others, to help others, to heal others, to bless others, all because we have been blessed first through Jesus, who was sacrificed for us, who was raised for us, who gives us new life, and we just thank you for this gift of Jesus. We need Jesus because we have gone off course. We have strayed, we have sinned, we're truly sorry, and we ask your forgiveness again through Jesus the Christ. God, we feel your compassion for us, and we are so grateful for that compassion, for that forgiveness. 
and may we reflect that compassion upon others as we give, as we practice stewardship, uh, as we help others in the many ways we've just mentioned. Just help us, O oh God, to focus our compassion that you have given to us to those in need. God, we have prayers ourselves, our prayers for need and our prayers of rejoicing and thanksgiving that we now pray to you with our spoken words and with our silent words. God, thank you so much for hearing our prayers. God, may we always feel and give your compassion daily. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll ask the children to please come up now for the children's moment. Good to see you all. Uh, why don't I take a spot, and if you could all get in a circle around me, if you could get a few more down here. Great, great, great. Okay, cool. Um, has anyone seen the show? Uh, I'll put the candy back here, so you're not tempted. <laughs> has anyone seen the show, The Chosen? Anyone seen no, that? No. no? Okay. So it's a great series. Uh, yeah, well, that's good. That's good. This is a, it's a great series about Jesus and his disciples. And there's one episode where Jesus has been healing people all day. And he comes back, and he's just really, really, really tired. So I want us to pretend for just a minute that we've been out with Jesus, and he has healed all the people. Everyone look out there. He's healed all of those folks. And we've been here for hours. And he's been healing and helping all of them. And we've been helping Jesus as well. So let me just ask you, as you look at them, so look out in the crowd, as you look at them, how do you think if they've been here for hours, like out in a field, how do you think they feel? Tired, right? And if you feel tired, what else might you feel? Worn out. Worn out, thirsty. good. Thirsty, good. What else goes with thirsty? Hungry, right, right. So there's a story in Matthew and Luke about this. And uh, let's keep our hands to ourselves, please. Thank you. And uh, Jesus looks out at the crowd and they are tired, and they are worn out, and they are thirsty, and they are hungry. And he's wondering what to do to them, uh, with them, and for them. And what do you think comes to his mind? What, and the disciples' mind? What should they do if they're thirsty and hungry? Go inside and get some food. Go inside and get some food, but... There's a field. They're all out in a field. And so, Leo, what? Yeah, I can eat outside sometimes, too. So he says to his disciples, uh, you feed them. You feed them. And that's what they do. They feed them because what Jesus has, as you look out to all those hungry people, what do you think that Jesus and the disciples have in their hearts? What's in their hearts? Well, there's blood, yeah, but like they're feeling hearts. That's a good comment, Nathan. Yep, uh-huh. What, what do they have in their heart, like they're feeling heart? No, love. They're, love, right, love and this fancy word called compassion, which means to feel with. They feel for these people, and then they feed them because they have compassion. They give something to them in terms of food, and they find food, and they share it, and there is enough for guess how many people? Nope, please don't do that. Thank you. 
guess how many people are there? There's more than a hundred. A thousand, there's more than a thousand. Do you know? Yeah. One hundred? How many? Very close. Five thousand. There's five thousand. There's a lot. There's just a lot of people. So we are about to do the same thing this month in all the different ways we just talked about. We're going to be helping others and feeding others and caring for others. We just did a whole bunch of stuff just now that in which we, we do all of that. We collect money for food. We help people when they come to the door. We just do a lot of different things in this church to help. So um, I ask you to think about how you can have compassion for people who need, and uh, especially uh, for those who um, might need something that you have, what you might do for them, okay? So let's pray, please. As I say, you say prayer. So I'll say something you repeat after me, dear God. Dear God. Thank, you thank you for Jesus, for, Jesus. for, compassion, for compassion, and food, and food. that we share. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm about to share candy. Go slow, please, respectfully. Good job, everyone. Good job, good job, good job. Yep, be slow. Yep, there. There are plenty of Rolos. That'd be just fine. Go for it. Yep, got one more. No, yep, there you go. Cool. You're welcome.
For our scripture today, I'm reading from Matthew 15, 32 through 37. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry or they may collapse on the way. His disciples answered, where could we get enough bread in this remote place to feed such a crowd? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied, and a few small fish. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish. And when he had given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and they in turn to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. We thank um, uh, Jan for the reading of that word, and thanks to the handbells. Uh, and I ask you, or just a brief correction, the Matthew version actually has 4,000, and uh, other versions have 5,000. So just a brief correction of that number that I offered, and I will uh, ask you to pray with me, please. God, bless us in this time so that we might feel your compassion and be compelled to share that with others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this will be another sermon where I invite you to take a look at your Bibles uh, at Matthew 15, verses 32 through 37. Um, And so if you would look in your Bibles or the Pew Bibles, I'll be asking you a series of uh, questions here shortly about about this uh, important passage. Uh, But first, I want to just make a few comments about uh, followers of Christ who stand for one and a half or even two hours and they greet people and they make toy balloon after toy balloon at the National Night Out last July, like this church did, at this very tent, as you can see. Uh, There's Mike Woods standing there and there's Adam kind of behind him and and the balloon makers are are there. We we made toy balloon after toy balloon had conversation after conversation for one and a half to two hours. A congregation that uh, gives school supplies for Park Avenue Elementary. And there you go. We collected these last uh, September. And Jesus' followers who support their pastor with a card shower on his one-year anniversary. And their cards uh, that are were that came out of that uh, celebration. These are just a few examples of giving that one church, this church, exhibit its generosity in terms of giving to others, especially giving God's love. And where does that giving come from? As we talked about in the children's moment, it comes from compassion. Uh, As I indicated a moment ago in Matthew chapter 15, verses 29 to 31, in other words, a few verses before this particular section of Matthew, uh, Jesus is healing a lot of people. He has compassion for the crowd, the scripture says uh, in in verse 32. So let's look briefly at that word compassion for a moment. It has two roots to it. The first is come, uh, which means with, Latin for with, and then passion is feeling, so with feeling. So compassion, uh, like I said a moment ago uh, with, the, with the young people, um, and, and it's, the heart is not, about, not just about muscles and blood, the feeling heart is about feeling, is about feeling for others and feeling so deeply that we are impelled and compelled to do something with that feeling. We want to help. We want to help people whenever we have this sense of compassion. So, in other words, Jesus feels with the people. That is the root of generosity, isn't it? Whenever we feel with someone, then we are generous. So, just briefly, whom do you feel with? 
Who do you have compassion for? Family, good. Older people, good. Yep, uh-huh. Uh, I'm sorry? People you live with, good, thank you. Everyone you interact with, yep. There's an example of one who is coming to church now because of that, so thank you, Andy. Good, good. Those are all examples uh, of uh, people that we have compassion for. In verse 33, then, it, in the state of compassion, again, as I shared during the children moment, the disciples ask a good question. Where do we get bread from? Now, the disciples, uh, as is often the case, especially in Mark, the Gospel of Mark, but it's true in the Gospel of Matthew as well, are a little bit dense here because the disciples have a whole tradition, the Jewish people have a whole tradition of getting food from the desert, from the wilderness. When did that happen? Centuries before. It's part of their history. It's part of their DNA. When did they get food in the desert? This is a question for you. Manna from heaven. That's right. Thank you. Manna, manna from heaven. I think there was a funny comment over here. We'll just let that section enjoy. <laughs> manna from heaven. That's right. So they already knew the, the answer to that question. It comes from God, right? That's where the manna came from. It comes from God. So Jesus, in going down that path of having a sense of how to feed all of these people, he first asked about supplies. One of the first things that happens whenever we have compassion, whenever we give, is we take stock, right? What are our supplies? What do we have? What do we need to give? And lo and behold, they discover that. What do they discover? You tell me as you look in your Bibles. What supplies do they have? Seven loaves and two fish. Seven loaves and two fish. There, there's a diff, different version, like I said, of this story uh, in, in Luke. But in this particular version, that's what they have. And that's really the first question we ask. What do we have to give? And then Jesus orders. He commands. He doesn't ask. He doesn't... Uh, uh, he, he does not... Um, sit like in a committee meeting and say, what in the world are we going to do? Jesus commands. We get command from God. You give. Give it away. Help. Be generous. Be compassionate by giving for others. What do you think God is commanding Park Avenue Christian Church to do now out of our compassion what is this church being asked to do offer hope good time give time good I ask us to reflect on that those are two great answers uh, we had a whole bunch of answers to that question a few moments ago in terms of um, stewardship, in terms of caroling, in terms of uh, DMARC and, and the gifts we give for food uh, to the needy in our area. There were three answers just right there, just before the, before the prayer time that we had. I ask us as a church to continue to ask that question of ourselves. And so what does Jesus first do with the provisions in verse 36? Verse 36, what does he do? Yep, Mary Ellen. He, he asks a blessing, right, from God. Indeed, indeed. What if we, and maybe we already do this, maybe, maybe you and I already do this, but I ask this again for our reflection and for our action. What if we, before any action taken, 
for any act of compassion or generosity on our part? What if we paused and ask a blessing? As we cart all the supplies off uh, in a couple weeks for Park Avenue, uh, the, the, of gently used toys, what if we said a blessing over that? How might the world change in this corner of the world? The miracle then occurs in verse 37. There's enough. There is satisfaction, it is said in, in Matthew. So the feeling with, we go to the next slide, please, results in feeling full. Feeling with, compassion, whenever we feel with, then a miracle occurs, and we feel full, and others feel full from our compassion. That's normally how it turns out. And they have leftovers. Now, there were leftovers in the desert with Moses and with the manna. But what were the people told? This is a little stretch here. So I'm asking us to stretch and to think about our Old Testament history. But what were the people told to do at the end of the day with the manna? What were they told to do? I'm sorry? Destroy it. Very good, Linda. Thank you. Destroy it. They were told to throw it away. In fact, uh, the scripture says in Exodus, some don't. And Moses gets mad at him for, for those that don't. But there, there is just a sense in the Exodus uh, scripture that uh, there's enough just for the day. And then for the Sabbath, uh, they get a double helping on Friday to kind of tide them over uh, so that stuff isn't coming down on the Sabbath. So they... God isn't working on the Sabbath, right? Because that's one of the Ten Commandments, which they also get uh, in, in, in that whole uh, Exodus story. That's all in Exodus 16. But there is enough in this version of the story of the manna in the desert, in, in, a, in a desert place or in a wilderness. There is an overabundance. So, so the story changes. It's not that they throw something away that day. No, they keep it. There's an overabundance. So with Jesus, there isn't just one day, and, and we, we focus on the provision for one day. There is an overabundance. There is an eighth day of creation, a day of abundance, a day in which we have more than enough. A day in which there are leftovers, enough to share with even more people. Enough so that our faith issues forth in blessing more and more and more people. Thousands. Can I hear an amen on that? There is an eighth day of creation suggested in this passage so that there is extravagance. We talked about extravagance a couple weeks ago, remember? There is fullness. And where do we hear the word fullness else in Scripture? In Paul's writing, Colossians 1.9, In him the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. The fullness comes in Jesus. That's the miracle that gives us everything we need and more. So then a head count is taken, verse 38, to see how many were fed. So it's not just, you know, Linda who takes attendance and deacons and other churches that take attendance. They're taking attendance in the Bible too, right? So this is part of your biblical history, Linda, right here. They take attendance. And then in verse 39, Jesus moves on to the next place. And in chapter 16, Jesus will be tested, but then he will be revealed as the Messiah, the place where compassion is revealed. In all that we do, especially regarding stewardship, let us come 
passion. Let us say, come, passion. Come, passion. Say it with me. Come, passion. Come, passion. Come, passion. Thank you. I have seen this compassion here and the other places I've served over and over and over again. Grandpa's coming for Christmas, says April, in a Better for Worse comic that was uh, sent out in 1999. April, settle down, her mom says. You're jumping and twirling and, and cause, you're driving me crazy, says her mom. I'm sorry, April says. I can't help it. I've got too much happy inside. April responds. What if we allowed ourselves to have just way too much compassion inside so that we feel full to the point that we say over and over again, compassion, and there's enough for us, and there's enough for everyone we meet. How would our world change? Will you pray with me, please? God, thank you for your compassion. Thank you for its reality in our stewardship and in our giving. Inspire us, O oh God, to feel that compassion, to feel full, and then to share it with others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One place where we get filled up and feel full is our communion that we're about to receive that is, is passed to us. We prepare for it through our communion song. Let us talents and tongues employ. Verse 1, please. From Matthew 26, just a few chapters beyond where we just were. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread. After blessing it, so here's blessing again, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to him, them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Will you pray with us, please? Our gracious Lord and Savior, we thank you for that extreme compassion which resulted in your ultimate sacrifice for us. We thank you for Jesus and the bread that represents his body and the cup that represents his blood. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and fill us up with compassion as we take and eat it this morning. Now we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation.
All four Gospels in the Bible tell of that message that we heard about this morning. And a version of that is found also in John 6, and there we read that a boy was the one to share his few loaves and his fish. Imagine if you were that boy offering everything you had in your possession to your Messiah. How often do we do that? I can't even imagine it to offer our, our whole selves. That would be very hard, but a child did it. In Deuteronomy it says, To the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth, and everything in it. Let us remember that as we take up our tithes, or if you want to give online at paccdoc.org.
really want to thank you, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for all of your love. Oh, thank you, Lord. I want to God, indeed, we give you thanks for our very lives, for these gifts, and for where they will go and who they will touch. We ask your blessing upon them and us and those who receive them. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our song of invitation is an opportunity for us all to rededicate our lives to Christ again. It's also an opportunity for those wanting to become a member of this congregation to do so by coming forward and joining by confession of faith or transfer membership from another church. Let us please sing verse 1 of Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Before the benediction, just a kind reminder of our congregational meeting uh, immediately after this, so feel free just to stay seated. I'll receive anyone who needs to, to go on, but uh, Jan will lead that. And then our uh, elders and diaconate will meet uh, separately uh, as well and do their business. Let's now receive the benediction. God, plead it. please send us forth from here with compassion in our hearts and in our actions. We pray this in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.